Uh, very, very excited this morning about uh, life, and uh, we're going to uh, have our niece and nephew come up. How you doing, Josh? I said, how are you doing? No, I didn't say what. I can figure that out. Amen. And I'm just so excited about this because God is the greatest part of our family. And when young people like Jason and Taylor decide to dedicate their baby. These guys live clear out in, in Prospect Valley. They live at the farm out there, and uh, it, it's just amazing. It's a long ways. What, did it take an hour to get here? Probably? Take an hour? Yeah, and so this is really their church, and they come here once in a while. But I just, I just want you to know that these guys love God, and, and I know they do. And that, to me, is a huge testimony. I mean, these are young people. I mean, I don't know if you deal with young people very often. Hello, we got a whole bunch of them sitting right there in our family. But, but these are... Uh, um, they're not normal young people. I mean, there's a lot of young people that just don't care. They don't care about God. And I see that so much. Not just young people. There's older people that don't care about God either. But these guys care, not only care about God, but they believe God. They love God. And I'm very, very proud of them. That, and they're, uh, they're doing their call. To, uh, Taylor's called to be a veterinarian, take care of animals. And... Uh, Jason's called to take care of Taylor. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, he takes care of animals, too. They have a, a special uh, Lumix feed that they give to cattle. He's got an incredible business going on with all of that. And so they're, uh, they're in agriculture, and we just think that's awesome. But I'm going to have the whole, the whole dang family come up here right now. Everybody that wants to, you don't have to come up if you don't want to, but we'd love to have the whole family up here because we're dedicating these kids, these two new ones, the twins, to Jesus. Amen? The sons of thunder. So come on up, Lingus family. Jason and Taylor Lingus. You guys know Tam and Gary, Luke, Michelle? Huh? Have these little dudes. You got somebody downstairs? Well, that's good. Wow. Look at these guys. Are they amazing? Hi, bud. <laughs> That's a hundred dollar smile right there. Hi, Nick. Hi, bud. Hi, bud. Hi, Smiley. Hi. Hi, bud. Can we hold him? I don't know who they are. Hi, bud. I figured it out. John's head stays rolled around. We have to keep him figured out. Wow. Wow, this here they cool. are. Hi, right, bud. You think I'm cool? This is John and James. John and James, Amen. sons of thunder. We're very proud of them. There's a scripture here, and it says, Let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for such belongs to the kingdom of God. Amen. Parents. That's an exhortation to you guys. That's a word for you. You guys connect these kids to God. That's your job. 
You're a, you're, you're a very talented couple. You have, you, you've uh, got great educations. You've uh, stepped out in the world and you're doing my, you're, you're, you're shakers. You're, you're, you're shaking the world. You're doing something and I'm very proud of that. And that's wonderful, but that's not the key. The key is Jesus. And the key is bringing these three to him. And really, when we're doing a baby dedication, we're dedicating them to the Lord, amen? And we pray over them, and we prophesy over them, and we believe God. But I want you to know something. We're really dedicating them. They're making a commitment to bring these kids up in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they shall not depart from it. Come on now. Amen? That's what parenting is all about. Right? Grandma and grandpa. Right, grandma and grandpa. Aunts, uncles, cousins. <laughs> Look at her. She's going, hey, I know those guys. Amen? And so it's such a powerful time to me to say that these two belong to the Lord. Amen? Amen? And they're, they're, uh, they're not just covered by him, they're in him. And when you guys have that uh, incredible day when you lead them to Jesus and you, t you, you give them the plan of salvation, you'll remember this day because that's what you dedicated yourself to do. And that's just the beginning. And then all the fun stuff starts, right? All the fun stuff comes. It starts already. Stuff has already started. <laughs> this is all the fun stuff right now, right? It's, this is the easy time, in case you didn't know. <laughs> Look at Grandma. <laughs> this is easy. They're really easy to carry. Look at him, man. You know what? I have a real easy time. He does? Does he look uncomfortable? He's happy. He doesn't care. Are you? What? What? Yeah. So we're going to pray over these guys and we're going to believe God with them. Will you guys stretch your hands this way? Father, I thank you for this family. And I thank you for the love that is here. I thank you, Father God, that these, these two have brought these beautiful children into the world to raise them up, to train them, Father God, in the ways of God. It says, let God be true and every man a liar. We're not teaching them about the worldly stuff. We're teaching them about Jesus, his principles, his life, his ways, and teaching him that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And that you bring life as you teach them and disciple them and love them up like the parents that you're called to be. Lord, as I pray over these two today, I believe in Jesus' name that they have their hearts open to you. It's not about anything but that. Lord, if we're, our hearts are open to you, we can hear your voice. We can see the path that you're leading us on. And that's what I pray over this family, that they can see clearly the ways of Jesus, that they can hear, their, their ears are open, their spirit ear is open, their spirit eyes are open to see Jesus and to see the path and see the ways of Jesus. And as they, as they bring them through, they know it's not about religion. None of us are about religion, but we're about Jesus. Because Jesus is Lord of James and John. Jesus is Lord of this family. And they are loved by Jesus. They're in his arms, they're in his everlasting arms. They will, we speak long, healthy life over them. 
We speak a blessing over them that they will serve the Lord, that they will bring the, the joy and the peace to everybody that they're around that only can come from Jesus. And they'll share it in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father God, for the power that is in them. Father God, we just pray over them. We pray the power of Jesus, the power of the spirit of the living God, that each one of these children, Father God, will not only follow you, but they'll flourish in you. They'll just flourish in you. Amen. Hallelujah. He wants to hang on my mustache. I just want to say, excuse me, I just want to say that um, there's power in our words, and you've named them James and John, sons of thunder, so just know that there's power in that word, <laughs> so just know that, Yes. just know that though, and let train them up, it says train them up in the way that they should go, not in the way that you want them to. The Lord has a calling on each one of their lives. And the hardest part of parenting is to know which which way, you know, to let go and let them be who God created them to be and not just how we want them to be. So you did name them Sons of Thunder. So I think they're, they're going to have a little bit of rambunctiousness to them. So, but that's good. They have, they have a call. Yeah, look at you. She's speaking it and it's happening. <laughs> Is that awesome? Anybody else? Mona? Just All right. kind of second yeah. that I was um, reading this morning in Matthew right. about um, James and John. And when they heard um, Jesus call them, when Jesus said, come, they came. And it says they came immediately. So I pray that their ears are open. And when Jesus calls, calls they come immediately. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. They're, they are blessed. You guys have anything, grandparents, that you would like to speak over these guys? We're just we're blessed, aren't we? And I want you guys to know something. You're this is a great family, and God has you here as part of this. I know that somebody said it takes a village, and I, I, you know, I don't go there. But it's true, I mean, it, it really is true that we have to be, all of us, imparting into this family. Amen? And so, what, what a deal. We are blessed to be a part of this, and I, I'm grateful to be your uncle. Amen? We love you guys, we bless you, and we thank God for you. Amen? And we have these little uh, certificates here. We'll do that later? Okay, never mind. And then just pass this around, will you? Huh. I think so. I think they're dedicated. You're dedicated. You're dedicated, bud. Proud of you guys. Isn't that cool? They're the best. And this is Miss Grace. That's Grace. She's, the big sister. She's already been through this. You remember? <laughs> <laughs> she was just listening to every word I was saying. When I was praying, she was praying with me. She was, man. She was like, wow. Huh, Grace? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. We love you guys. Love you. We're proud of you. And these children are dedicated to the Lord. Most of all, you're dedicated to the Lord. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That's what you did. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. We love you. Love you. Bless you. Thanks, y'all. Wow. Wow. You know... When we come together like this, we come together like this, um, it's really a big deal. I, I don't know if you realize it. 
but it's really a big deal. When, you, when we do something like that, it, it, it's a monumental time in their life. And, and, and it sticks with them. Amen? It's going to stick with those kids forever. Amen? They belong to Jesus. Isn't that cool? I don't know, guys. I don't know. I, uh, I kind of disregarded my, my canned baby dedication. And I just got just to pray over them and just to pray over those guys. And that's what I really felt, not, not, just, uh, not just some little thing that we do in church, but a powerful impartation of the life of Jesus. And that's what, I, that's what I felt happened here. And I hope you guys felt that. I don't know. I'm, I was pretty choked up, literally. I, I, uh, I was pretty choked up to do it because it blesses me so much. That's a, those, those are, uh, that's a good way to be choked up. Amen. Amen. But uh, what a blessing and what an what a honor to do that for, for our kids. Amen. And look at these people. Blue in from Texas. Cliff and Linda. Wow, first Sunday back. Good to have you back. Welcome to snowy Colorado. <laughs> it was snowing here last week. Did you come up in the snow? No, the day after. Oh. Snow is over for the year. Well, good. <laughs> oh, man, it's so good to see you guys. What a blessing it is. And uh, we're getting ready. World Conference is starting this week, so be a part. Come morning. Night, be a part. You'll, you'll, uh, we'll, we'll fill you in as we go. But we're blessed, amen, just to be here this morning and uh, just to realize how powerful our God is. Amen. I know the world is uh, in uh, much disarray. The uh, It looks and appears like uh, the demonic is winning over our country, but it's not. Because what we can't see is taking it down right now. And we're there, there's a move of God right now, and we are going to see this awakening bring America back. Amen? Amen. You believe it? Yes. Come on, you, we got to believe it together. That's our part. Not, not just prayer, but you have to do your part. I was so uh, proud of uh, these two ladies sitting right here in the front row. I'm proud of you too, Sam, but you're not a lady. But, uh, uh, <laughs> but they went to the... Uh, what, what, yeah, they, they went to the big... Uh, conservative conference and it was just a powerful time right and so thank you for doing your part Dory for what you do uh, spreading the word and all of you that do the political stuff as well amen uh, uh, gosh uh, Rick and Eloise you guys are planting seed Rick and Eloise thank you for what you guys do in the kingdom and and getting the word out about what's going on in the political arena and how to vote. And uh, hopefully we'll have some stuff up here from, uh, from uh, uh, Andrew's ministry for this voting stuff. We should get some stuff this week so we can pass some of that out too. But we have good things happening, guys. And good things are happening. We got to believe it. You got to do what God told you to do. He got to do what he called you to do. Amen? That you have a part in it, and that part is what God called you to do. Amen. He told me that if I do my part, that I'll make a difference. I didn't think I could. I, I felt pretty small. I felt like a, a small fish in a big ocean, you know? But, you know, you just feel like that because you look around, and I mean, you know, I've been to Washington, and I was there for the prayer rally. I was there for... Um, we prayed through the whole city with a team. We did all that, and uh, I felt pretty small, even in that. But you know what? Do you know what God told me when I was feeling small? He said, 
you might feel small, but I'm big. Amen. 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 <laughs> and greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. And so we're making a difference. We are making a difference. Uh, you got to read this. You got to read Mona's prophetic word that she got from the Lord today. And uh, well, she got it this week, but she wrote it for today's deal. And it tells you about that. It tells you that you're part of this. And amen, this, this is going to explode, guys. This church is going to explode. Amen. There's a day coming when you'll have to wait in line. There's a day coming when there won't be a seat. Day coming when you've got to go into the big building and sit in a folding chair and watch it on the video. A day coming. And we'll have other services. That because in this outpouring, in this awakening, we're going to see a move of God like we've never seen. It's not the same like we've ever seen before. We, we've, we've seen revival. I've been in it. I've been there. I've been, when I was in Toronto, I was in uh, Pensacola, I was in the Cornfield Revival in, in Smithton, uh, Missouri. So I've been in those revivals, been part of them, and it's amazing. But let me tell you something. What's going to happen is bigger and greater and different than we've ever seen. And it's not just going to be in church. Watch out now. It's not going to just be in church. It's going to be wherever we are. Amen. Amen. So we're carrying that thing to the outside. Amen. We can come in here. We can get, we build each other up, man, and we go out and impart. Amen. That's what's happening. So I'm excited about it. I'm not down about it. You know, every day there's some hit. There's some hit. Well, you know, the Supreme Court's going to decide about our religious freedom. Really? Not me. Come on. You hear all these things, right? You heard them? You've heard them all. You heard all the bad news. Well, we're here to give you good news, amen? amen. And the good news is that Jesus won already. Listen, the devil's defeated. Doesn't mean he's not trying hard, but he is defeated. And he knows it. He knows he's defeated. But he's going to take everybody out that he can, and he's going to pull everybody out of their, their call that he can. And it's a, it, it, it's a hard, hard hit that he's making right now. The hardest he's ever tried. Yeah. But let me tell you what, he's not getting us. Because we know Jesus. Right. And we know the power of Jesus. And we know that he's a defeated foe. Amen? And he's not going to defeat you. Aren't you glad? You got something to rejoice about? Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I think, uh, Taylor um, and Jason dedicating these kids today, I, and this is, uh, this is uh, uh, not just for you, it's for all of us, because it was for me, but it, it's, uh, it's something I want you to grab onto as new parents. Amen. And you got a three-year-old, so you're not brand new. <laughs> but it's so good and you know the Lord has called me and uh, we're so blessed to have all the things that going on and uh, that are going on here at Mountain High we have our uh, revelation study that uh, Rick has been putting on Rick and Eloise put a lot of time into that and it's a great study uh, doing our uh, other things that we do around discipleship men's men's meetings, women's meetings, all the stuff that we do. But in this discipleship, what the Lord has called me to do is to minister about the heart, the heart, our heart. God deals with the intent of our heart. And it's so important for us to realize where we are. Hello? I knocked my coffee over. Where are we? We're in our heart. That's where you live. That's who you are. That's where Jesus lives. Amen. Amen. Well, the, the most important thing is to figure out what the most important thing is. And the most important thing is relationships. But until you know where those relationships connect, you have nothing. You don't know. You're just blundering around like I did for many years. You ever just blunder around and 
Wonder what, what's next? What am I, where am I going? Yeah, come on. Just whatever will be, will be. Okay, Sarah, Sarah, Doris Day. How many of you knew who Doris Day was? <laughs> you guys don't know, that's funny. <laughs> Maybe it's not. Maybe it means I'm old. Hmm? But it isn't. Life isn't que sera, sera. Now, life's a kick. Don't get me wrong. I'm telling you what, we're here to enjoy life. I'm telling you what, those guys with those babies, you've got to enjoy the time you're in. Amen? Enjoy it. Have fun. Rejoice. And again, I say rejoice with those kids. Amen? And all of us need to rejoice. In John 14, 1, and I'm not going to read the whole verse. I'm just using part of it here, but uh, uh, for time's sake, I want you to go back and study all this. Amen. In John 14, 1, it says, let not your heart, what? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Yay. Can you say yay to that? Yay. yay. I mean, I'm telling you what, that's a major deal. Let not your heart be troubled. Now, you know, Jesus was uh, tell, telling them that he was going to check out. He was telling them that they're going to kill him. They're going to take him out, and they're, they're looking at him like, you know, huh? They're looking at him like disciples, like all of us do sometimes. Amen. All of us are disciples sometimes. We're disciples. We're, we're going, huh? What? You're going to die and we're going to eat your flesh and drink your blood? What? You're making us cannibals? What? You know? Can you imagine? Can you imagine what those guys were going through in that stuff? I can't. I mean, I was pondering that the other day when I was studying. And I was just in a in a place and I was pondering I said what if I was there and what would I be thinking if he was telling me that I'd be going we're going to do what you can't you give me some more info on that isn't that what we all want yeah come on we want all the info I'm telling you what the info ain't getting you there hello knowing God is going to get you there Knowing the word, which is knowing Jesus, the, and this, this is the word, this is Jesus. Hello? Amen. Knowing that will get you somewhere, but it's not just the info. What is it? So what is it? It's the heart. See, let not your heart be troubled. And I looked this word troubled up in uh, several uh, dictionaries, Greek dictionaries. And Vines said this part, troubled, in, uh, according to this word right there in the Bible, of the soul troubled of the soul and the spirit. It means the hearts of the disciples, troubled hearts. And minds of those in fear, perplexity, affliction, and agitation of the soul. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. Huh? Kind of sounds like where some of us have been. Some of us have been there in the last couple of years. Come on. Our hearts have been troubled. I would be a liar to say mine hasn't been. My heart's been troubled. But Jesus said, what? Let not your heart be troubled. Oh, let not our emotions be troubled. And then you look up that word let. It's a decision. Get this, it's up to us. 
How, how, how many of you understand that it's up to you how you feel? That's right. It's up to you. It's up to you how you feel. It's up to you how you deal with a Marxist agenda. It's up to you how you deal with demonism coming into our schools, trying to make perverts out of our children. Jason and Taylor, don't let them. Don't let them do it to them. Saying that it's okay for a child to be another gender than what it was born is demonic. Do you want me to hold back? It's demonic and it's wrong and it's sick. And, and, and letting men and boys play girls' sports is stupid and demonic as well. And it's wrong and it's not the way it should be. And letting them in the bathrooms. What? What? I tell you what, man. If I would have went in a girl's bathroom when I was a kid, my dad would have whooped me. Come on. What are you talking about? Now it's okay. Yeah, we might have probably would have got arrested. Amen. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth, isn't it? But it's a messed up deal. But we got to let not our emotions be troubled. We got it. That's the soul realm. Are you with me? Where he's talking about the soul there? The soul is a mind, will, your emotions, your intellect, all, the, all these things that we're about. Our soul, we can't, we can't let our soul not be troubled. We got to say, no, I'm not giving that. I'm not going to let my soul be troubled about all these things. Amen? Amen. You know, if you're, a, if we, we went to Costco and Sam's Club and Mona's buying all this stuff and, um, you know, for the uh, conference, getting all the stuff, all the food and everything. It's amazing. You know, we used to buy those big things of butter at Costco. Last time I bought them, I've been on Costco runs, you know, with a list. You ever done that? It's a lot of fun, isn't it, Sam? But I'm getting good at it. I'm getting good, man. I know where the stuff is. And then they move it on me. But, but, but I get her done, man. Boom, 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 boom. And then they move it on you. But then you got to go somewhere else. But anyway, those little things of butter that you buy were $6. This week, they're 12 12 That isn't, it didn't go up a buck. It doubled Oh my gosh, it's nuts. And then, what does that do to you? It makes me angry, Sam. <laughs> it makes me angry. It does. So am I going to go with my way? Or am I going to go with what Jesus said? He said, let not your heart be troubled. Now, he didn't say to hide your head in the sand and to be a weak church that does nothing. That's right. And say, okay, well, it's just going to be whatever. You know how many people have said that to me recently? Oh, I had a man tell me not long ago, well, I'm just not going to vote because I'm just not going to vote because it doesn't do any good anyway. Look at what we, where we are. I said that attitude is the reason we're where we are. That's what I told him. I told him that. And he goes, what do you mean? And so we had a long talk. <laughs> about two hours. About two hours. I believe he's going to vote now. I sure pray he does. Amen. And we're free to do that still. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Let not your heart be troubled when, when you don't have enough help when my sons are doing 
triple the work that they uh, that any one guy should do because they don't have help. That when our office, hi huh, Amy, when our office is just going crazy because people decide, oh, we're not going to come to work today. We have a hangnail. You know? Come on. Let not your heart be troubled. Come on. I'm telling you something big here. Now, I want you to know something. This is a commandment. Watch out. Now, grace people get all funky when you start talking about commandments. You ever, know, you ever notice that? Grace people get all funky when you start talking about commandments. Now, I want you to know that is a command of Jesus. But see, I don't think we get it. I don't think we understand the commandment of Jesus. Every command Jesus gave, he also empowered us to live it. Amen. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not like you got to, no, I got to do this and this and this. No, you've got to let. That's right. Amen. Amen? You got to let, you got you to make a decision to let him in. You got to let, let the grace of God work through you. Amen? Let the power of God in. Let it, and then let it out. Amen. Amen? You're empowered with the Holy Ghost to live that. You don't have to do it in your flesh. You know why? Because it doesn't work in your flesh. That's right. How many of us have tried to do it in our flesh? Come on, four of us? Yeah, I tried to do it in my flesh. You got to do it in the spirit. It doesn't work in the flesh. Amen? Holy moly. Don't ever forget that, please. Please, you awesome church of God, people that love God. Jesus empowered us to live these commands and not to have to live a whatever life. I have so many people tell me, well, whatever. No, it's not whatever. It's like get off of your blessed assurance and get going. Kick yourself in the rear. Just a few years ago, I could kick myself in the rear with both feet at the same time. I could. Let me see if I can still do it. You, want, you, want, you think I can, Joel? Yeah, I'm, I'm standing here just in case. I'm standing here. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I'm too stiff. Amen. But, but, but we just need to kick ourselves in the rear a little. Amen. We just say, come on, let's go. We got to let. We got to let not our emotions run us. We got to let not our emotions run us off the cliff. Or the Linda either. <laughs> that was funny. No, sorry, I just come up with these things. In most modalities used in counseling, and I've had the training, I know what they taught me. People today, they are urged to focus on the feelings and let them be troubled. Huh? Come on, man. Let's catharsis. <laughs> Come on. Now, there's a way to deal with stuff. I'm not, I'm not poo-pooing that. But it isn't bringing it out there and focusing on it. It's not troubling your heart. It's called sending it away. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen? And you don't have to sit there and try to figure it all out from the last 42 years and all the mistakes you made. That's not how it works. God will show you what you need, need to deal with today in your heart. Amen? It's very important when crisis comes not to focus on the problem, but to send it away and take it captive to the obedience of Christ. Amen? When you have crazy thoughts, I just say this. I say, oh God, I can't, I can't even believe I'm thinking this, but I give it to you. I send it away and I know you're going to obey it for me. Amen. That's what that means. He'll do it. Faithful is he who calls you for he also will do it. Amen. And that can be th taken in a lot of ways, but that is a powerful thing. Wow. 
When we let fear, grief, anger run away, it's nearly impossible to get it under control. How many of you understand that? When you let it run away, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to get it back. You can get it back, but it's, it's tough. That's one main reason why people seem to not get free from old heart issues. Because we let it go, we let it get away. There it goes. It's like, it's like riding a runaway horse. Now one time, Tam, when we were little kids, our dad and mom took us to some dude ranch. And I don't remember where it was even, but they took us there and they put us on horses. And they just said, you go right out there in that field. They didn't take us on a trail or anything. And we didn't know diddly, you know. And, <laughs> and we went out and Tammy and my mom and dad had their horses and there was another, somebody was with us, I don't remember who it was, but they were with us and they all stayed together, but not me. My horse took off. And I mean, he went 100 miles per hour. <laughs> At least it felt that way to me. And that dang horse took off and he made this big circle. You could see it where there was a trail. And I was holding on to the horn and his mane, trying to stay on the stupid thing. And he came around this corner and he knew right where a limb was. And it hit me right about here and threw me on the ground and that horse went right back to his feed stall, amen? That's what, that's what happens when we let our emotions run away with us. We get knocked down big time. We can't let this stuff take us out. It's just feelings. When you're all upset about your employees, Taylor, that's a word for you. It's just feelings. Here's your word, rise above it. Josh, when, you, when your employees are doing that to you, rise above it. You can't let it take you there. It says, let not your heart be troubled, amen? The key to having a trouble-free heart is to say no to runaway emotions. Say, no, I'm not letting you do this. No, no, I'm not gonna be angry today. I'm not going to be angry at the butter price. Come on. I'm not going to be angry of the, of the millennial that wouldn't talk to me. Have you been there? Hey, how you doing? What are you, a clone or something? A friend of mine and I went and picked up some building material one day. And, and we went to this place out by Brighton somewhere and we were getting some roofing material and um, we went into this place and it wasn't on earth. When you go through the gate, I say, I'm here to pick up this ticket. And the guy goes. And so I went there and we go in and there's a lady sitting there at a desk. I said, hi, how you doing? Here's a, here's a ticket. She goes, they wouldn't speak to us. Finally, I go over there to the last point and there's some guy on a forklift running around and I chased him down and I go, he goes, I said, where do you want me to park my truck? He goes, What are they? Are these people from Mars or what? Did they come from Mars? I don't know where they're from. They wouldn't talk to me. And finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I wasn't angry, but I couldn't take it anymore. And I went over to this lady. I go, ma'am, is there a reason why you people don't talk to us? And she goes, <laughs> she pointed to the door. I am can't, I'm not kidding you. Now, what is that? Now, that can get me boiling because I like friendly. Yes, sir. You know what? If you're friendly to me, I'll just do anything for you. I don't care. I'm easy. 
within the bounds of the Bible. I mean, you, you know, <laughs> not anything. But, but if you're friendly, man, if you have the gift of friendly, I'm, I'm with you. Amen. Amen. And ladies, I want you to know something. That works for your husbands really well. If you're friendly to them and nice to them, they'll do anything for you. I mean, just a word. I just thought I'd tell you. And men, men, do it. Amen. Come on now. It goes both ways, doesn't it? It goes both ways. Amen. That, that, that wasn't in the notes. Praise God. <laughs> Don't let those emotions get away with you. I always thought I had to vent and speak all my negative emotions. I went that way for years. Boy, I did a lot of damage. Did a lot of damage to my family and did a lot of damage to myself by just spewing it out of my mouth. By God, I'm gonna give him a piece of my mind. Come on. That don't work. No. We've got to let not our heart be troubled with that kind of anger. You've got to send that away. And you've got to go to Jesus and say, oh God, I can't do this. Would you take this from me? And he will say, yes, son or daughter, I will take it. Amen? Amen? Amen, Amen or oh no? Amen. Huh? Stop it. <sighs> Stop it before it runs wild. Being a mature believer means doing things even when we don't feel like it. I got 20 stories on that one. Amen. John 16, 33. In the world you shall have tribulation. What? Why do bad things happen? Well, that's a, that, that's a dumb question anymore. It's got to be a dumb question. The Bible answers it. Answers it. What? The Bible tells us this truth. John 16, 33. <laughs> Whatever, it's only 10 off. <laughs> In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Huh? Come on. I have overcome the world. Amen. He just showed us. Be of good cheer. Do your part. Go to the meeting. Amen. Do what he called you to go to the meeting. Go to the meeting. Go help us get people to vote right. Amen. Help us. Do your stuff. Do what he called you to do. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Stuff happens. But he says, be of good cheer. He is telling us to make the choice to rejoice in the middle of the stuff. Ding! Anybody get that text? Come on. Did that come in? Come on. Let not your heart be troubled. Man, that's so simple I can get it. We're just going to praise the Lord. We're going to receive communion here. Amen. Y'all too.